Hey everybody, welcome to Everything Cat Breeding, which is a podcast from The Milk Bar. Uh, my name is Lexi, and I'm the owner and caretaker of all the beautiful cats and kittens at Soros Ragdolls, located in Upper Coast, Maryland, producing traditional ragdoll cats. So today we're just going to be talking about our stud cats, how we house them, the problems with free roaming, and everything in between. So your stud cats are also known as kings or sires. Um, now, my first topic is definitely going to be housing and um, the main problems when you decide to free roam your males with your girls. Um, for me, the biggest thing is definitely going to be um, the harassment and unplanned pregnancies that can happen. So if you have a sexually mature male, then he is going to be tailing your girls nonstop, um, just hovering over them. He won't leave them alone. He'll just, it'll just be nonstop harassment. So if you have girls that are pregnant, that is just way too much stress on them. They'll be agitated. They may even fight a little bit and you really need to maintain the peace, make sure that they're in a very calm and peaceful environment and they're not being stressed out because we don't want any mis miscarriages. Um, the next thing is going to be your unplanned pregnancies. So that may not seem like a big deal if you're just starting out because, I mean, your whole thing is you're trying to get the cats pregnant, right? But there's so much that goes into an unplanned pregnancy that um, I totally, I just would not recommend housing your males with your females. So I'll give you a little bit of story on my very first letter that I had, um, which actually didn't, it was not a successful pregnancy. So what happened, my male, he was um, still a little young. I mean, not really young. He was pushing a year old, but he was not showing me any signs that he was sexually mature yet. He didn't really show any signs that he was interested in the girls or anything like that. So as far as I knew, he was not um, mating with them at all. So, um, but I found out that you know, my girl was pregnant when she delivered some kittens. I actually went to go pick my kids up from school. And when I got back, it was blood all on the floor. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what is going on? And I look and there's a baby. That is what I walked into. Um, and I tried to research and, you know, all this other stuff, but there's just no information out here really to help cat breeders out. So when you kind of are starting, if you don't have a really, really good mentor, you can be left winging it in a lot of situations. Now I do have a mentor. However, that was just some details. She never really specified with me. She, she would say, tell me other things, but that was one thing that we never touched on. And so I just was under the impression that they just could live freely, you know, as normal cats, like my girls can, but clearly I was wrong. Um, so let's dive into the unplanned pregnancy and all the issues with that. Um, I know, on Google, you can read about the whole pinking up thing, which is when your girls are showing signs of being pregnant, their nipples uh, start turning pink. They, As they progress in their pregnancy, they will get larger and pinker, you know. But the problem with that is, one, it's a range of days. So it can be anywhere from, say, 14 days to 21 days before they start pinking up. Um, the amount of pinkness can vary between cats and even just the same cat with pregnancies. So your, the date that you think it is can be extra way off. It really can be way off, um, which can lead to, I mean, you could just have medical issues. If you don't know the exact date to expect your kittens and yes, they can come a few days before a few days after, but if you don't have a general idea, a rough idea of when your cats are due, how do you know when your cat is overdue and needs medical attention? How do you know that your cat is experiencing, isn't experiencing preterm labor and could possibly have been taken to the vet to um, stop it? So just being a responsible breeder is also, you know, um, controlling the things that happen in your cattery. 
And unfortunately, if you don't know, you don't know. So that was one of the reasons why I started this podcast, just because of the lack of information that's out there, which leaves um, a lot of breeders just kind of winging it or trying to figure things out along the way, uh, which can just be really stressful. And it can really just spare you uh, the headache of, you know, figuring this stuff out on your own. So um, not only that, but you also want to be marketing your litters. You know, some people do like to just have announcements like, oh, this cat is expecting. Um, And that just helps you secure kittens for that litter in advance, right? But from a customer standpoint, if my, if the breeder that I want to get a cat from is saying, oh, my cat is supposed to have a litter um, on May 1st, but then that cat doesn't have a litter for three weeks after that. Now I have to wait even longer to receive my kitten um, than the expected take home day or pickup day, whatever you want to call it. So that can lead to um, people canceling on you when you've already secured homes for the entire litter, Um, you know, which also would involve possibly refunding them their deposit because at the end of the day, you didn't hold up um, your side of the deal, you know, so I do feel like that might warrant a refund. Um, yeah, so that's definitely something that you want to um, think about and consider. Um, and then also when you house your males, you really want to put them up somewhere like, um, that has a solid floor, like that's tile, that is easy to clean, that you can sanitize and everything because most male cats spray. And a lot of the people that say their cat doesn't, they probably just don't know that their cat is spraying because for quite a while, my male cat would not spray in front of me or even in the same room I was. And when I finally saw him do it in front of me, then I started noticing little tiny little specks of, you know, yellow in some of the corners around my house and stuff that it just areas I didn't frequent much. So I wouldn't have paid attention to it. Um, so yeah, you know, spraying and eventually if they keep spraying and keep spraying, your house will start smelling like urine and you just don't want that. Um, not only that, it's just unsanitary. So, you know, you can think out the box though, when it comes to housing your mail, any space almost can be used in your home to house your male stud cat. Um, you know, even if you have like a very large bathroom, you can house him in there because it has the tile floor and everything. Um, you know, I would say just make sure it's a decent sized bathroom, not a little itty bitty bathroom, not a half bath, but like if you have a true, you know, master bathroom that has um, plenty of floor space and all that. I mean, you could even throw up some shelves for him to hop on and all that. So he's elevated. You can, you know, you can still put your um, toys in there, his litter box, his food and water, uh, all of that. Uh, You can also, if you have a decent sized walk-in closet, you can convert that into a cat room. Um, And all these are ideas that were for people that don't have a spare bedroom. You can um, also, so with the the uh, walk-in, I actually chose that option because I prefer my cats to be um, in areas that I frequent a lot because just their temperament is very important to me and my breeding program. So I like my cats to have tons of interaction all day. So I chose to convert one of my walk-in closets. My master be- bedroom has two. And the one that I converted is six feet wide by 11 feet long. So it's a very big, you know, closet. Um, And then it has super high ceilings. My whole house does. So I would assume the ceiling is probably 10, 11 feet tall, which allows me to have shelving in there that he can climb on. You can do the little bridges and you can attach um, those wooden cat houses to the walls. It's so much you can do if you just get creative. I mean, if the ceilings are tall enough, you could even create like a, um, a loft type area at the top. So you can really just get creative with it. Um, again, like I do have additional space that I could have housed him in, 
But I prefer him to be in areas that I frequent a lot because I don't want my baby just, you know, isolated and all this stuff. That's just, I'm I'm just really big on that. I don't like isolation. I don't like my animals being, um, you know, far away from me where they're not getting daily interaction other than a quick, I have to feed you and clean your litter box. Like, I, I, I just don't believe in that. So for me, I still treat my stud cat like a pet. Some breeders will say that you can't really consider them as pets. It's all up to you and how you run your program and what works best for you. I feel like, yes, he's a stud cat, but yes, he can still be a pet and he can still be treated as such. Um, So he doesn't have to be outside. He does not have to be isolated. You know, he can still have tons of interaction all day long. Um, It's a room that I'm constantly going in and out of for other things. He can see me because I have a gate on the door. So, um, you know, unless it's bedtime, the actual wooden door is open. When it's bedtime, it's closed. But 24-7, it's a gate up and he can still, um, I can touch him. I can talk to him. He can smell everything. He can see everything. So he's not isolated at all. And then there is a long 70-inch window that is probably, I don't know, maybe like five feet tall and um, he can view outside, you know? So he has like, it's almost equivalent to him being in a actual bedroom, but it's just a smaller space, a little bit smaller. Like I said, it's that cat room I converted was 11 feet long by six feet, um, seven feet wide. So it's a pretty, it's a big room. I just feel like one of the things as far as the spraying goes, you know, if you have a cat that's spraying around your house and stuff, if you haven't put them up yet or you don't want to, you can meet your stud cat where he is. And I'm just big on that with all of my cats in general. Um, Because if you know cats, you know that no matter what, they're going to do what they want to do. They might not do it in front of you. And some cats will definitely do stuff in front of you that they that you don't want them to do. But if you meet them where they are, Um, you both won't be frustrated with each other, you know? Um, so for me and my, my male cat, what I do is I utilize, you know, puppy pee pads and litter boxes. So just in his one room, we have three litter boxes set up and I will occasionally put uh, a pee pad on the floor because he likes to use uh, mark in this one little area by the door. So sometimes I'll put a pad there if he is actively spraying that spot, but it's, it's off and on with him for that location. But yeah, I just have the three litter boxes in that one space just for him. And it saves me from having to clean the floor all the time. And, you know, and just dealing with the urine smell, because again, it's going in the box in the litter. Um, and that just keeps everybody happy. You, it keeps your girls happy and it keeps the kittens happy and it keeps the male happy. Oh, and then another thing that you definitely want to consider is, you know, you can't really have your male running around when you have kittens running around. You know, kittens can um, get pregnant at a very young age. So if you have a kitten roaming around that say three or four months old, you don't want him interacting with that kitten like that. It's felt like unsupervised and stuff. So the worst thing that could happen is that, you know, you are sending this kitten home and you find out later that it was pregnant. I mean, technically, I feel like you should be sending them home spayed or neutered if they're not actually going to a breeder. Um, But, you know, not everybody does that. But that's definitely a risk, uh, a risk of pregnancy to any kittens, especially if they are hanging around a little bit longer past the 12 week mark, you know. So um, it's just something to very to always keep an eye on and be cautious about. So I just feel like having that control over my cattery and my program is it just works for me. I, I need to know my cat's due dates. I need to make sure that he's not harassing my girls and and all that. Um, and you can house your male cat outside too. Some people build a whole cat house with the, uh, outside enclosure and they can go freely between inside and outside. But again, I'm just the type of person that likes my cats with me in my home and to have as much interaction as possible. 
I don't want to just be that person that goes out there for an hour just to clean their their you know enclosure and feed them and do their litter box. I want them to have as much interaction as he would um, being a house cat. So that's a lot to think about. You know, it's definitely something you want to think about before you get your cats. Um, I think some people are under the impression that they can just get girls and they don't have to have a male to, uh, so they don't have to deal with that type of stuff. But I can tell you right now, uh, stud cats, it's just not common to stud your cat out in the cat world. Dogs, yes. You know, people stud their dogs out all the time, but in the cat community is very frowned upon. Um, there's a lot of risk and me personally, I would not purchase stud cat services and I would not offer stud cat services. And there's a lot that can happen when you do that. If you had somebody that, um, your stud cat, you know, they paid for your services and their cat had some sort of issue, maybe it was undiagnosed, whatever, or, you know, they had the testing done something. I don't know. But it's a lot that can go wrong. And I just feel like you're you're contaminating your whole cattery when you bring in random cats um, for stud services and vice versa. If you send your girls out to somewhere uh, to a stud service, you're possibly contaminating your whole cattery with just bacteria, um, viruses, and all type of stuff. So for me, it's not worth the risk. When you talk about the price of your uh, breeding cats, they typically cost double to triple what a pet home would be. So that's just not a risk I'm willing to take. Um, and even if I could, it'd probably be nearly impossible to find a stud cat anyways. So at least here in the US, I know it's definitely frowned upon and most people just, I mean, they just don't do it. They typically just have their stud cat. So you definitely want to make sure that you are considering all of these things and, um, all that before you get your stud cats. So that is a wrap on this episode. I hope that info was helpful and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. If you have a topic you'd like to learn about, be sure to leave a comment so we can touch on it in a future episode. Alrighty guys, see ya.